Hey everyone, it's MTS, aka Mel the Scientist, and today we're going to be looking at what is dark matter and dark energy. So I have a degree in biology from medicine. However, let's just say dark matter isn't a topic that is discussed as part of the pre-medicine track. <laughs> so I have no idea what dark matter is. I may have heard a few things here and there, but nothing for me to say confidently. So I really want to check out this video and learn something. So let's check it out. Matter as we know it. Atoms, stars and galaxies, planets and trees, rocks and us. This matter accounts for less than 5% of the known universe. About 25% is dark matter and 70% dark energy, both Whoa. of which are invisible. This is kind of strange because it suggests that everything we experience is really only a tiny fraction of reality. But it gets worse. Yeah, we really have much. no clue what dark matter and energy are or how they work. We are pretty sure they exist though. So what do we know? Hmm. Dark matter is the stuff that makes it possible for galaxies to exist. When we calculated why the universe is structured the way it is, it quickly became clear that there's just not enough normal matter. The gravity of the visible matter is not strong enough to form galaxies and complex structures. Stars would more likely be scattered all over the place and not form galaxies. So we know there is something else inside and around them something that doesn't emit or reflect light, something dark. But besides being able to calculate the existence of dark matter, we can see it, kind of. Places with a high concentration of dark matter bend light passing nearby, so we know there's something there that interacts with gravity. Hmm. Right now, we have more ideas about what dark energy is not than what it is. We know dark matter is not just clouds of normal matter without stars because it would emit particles we could detect. Dark right. matter is not antimatter because antimatter produces unique gamma rays when it reacts with normal matter. Oh. Dark matter is also not made up of black holes, very compact objects that That's probably what I would have thought it was. But... Violently affect their surroundings while dark matter seems to be scattered all over the place. Hmm. Basically, we only know three things for sure. One, something is out there. Two, <laughs> it interacts with gravity. Three, there is a lot of it. That is the most specific list I've ever seen. Dark matter is probably made up of a complicated exotic particle that doesn't interact with light and matter in a way we expect, but right now, we just don't know. Dark energy is even more strange and mysterious. We can't detect it, we can't measure it, and we can't taste it. Mm. But we do see its effects very clearly. In 1929, Edwin Hubble examined how the wavelength of light emitted by distant galaxies shifts towards the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum as it okay. travels through space. He found that fainter, more distant galaxies showed a large degree of redshift. Closer galaxies, not so much. Okay. Hubble determined that this was because the universe itself is expanding. The redshift occurs because the wavelengths of light are stretched as the universe expands. More recent discoveries have shown that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. Before that, it was thought that the pull of gravity would cause the expansion to either slow down or even retract and collapse in on itself at some point. Space doesn't change its properties as it expands. There's just more of it. New space is constantly created everywhere. Galaxies are tight bound clusters of stuff held together by gravity, so we don't experience this expansion in our daily lives, but we see it everywhere around us. Wherever there is empty space in the universe, more is forming every second. Okay. So dark energy seems to be some kind of energy intrinsic to empty space. Energy that is stronger than anything else we know and that keeps getting stronger as time passes by. Empty space has more energy than everything else in the universe combined. Wow. We have multiple ideas about what dark energy might be. One idea is that dark energy is not a thing, but just a property of space. Empty space is not nothing, it has its own energy. 
It can generate okay. more space and is quite active. So as the universe expands, it could be that just more and more space appears to fill the gaps and this leads to a faster expanding universe. This idea is close to an idea that Einstein had back in 1917 of a concept of a cosmological constant, a force that counteracted the force of gravity. The only problem is that when we tried to calculate the amount of this energy, the result was so wrong and weird that it only added to the confusion. Another idea is that empty space is actually full of temporary virtual particles that spontaneously and continually form from nothing and then disappear into nothing again. The energy from those particles could be dark energy. Or maybe dark energy is an unknown kind of dynamic energy fluid or field which permeates the entire universe but somehow has the opposite effect on the universe than normal energy and matter. But if it exists, we don't know how and where or how we could detect it. So there are still a lot of questions to answer. Our theories about dark matter and dark energy are still just that, theories. On the one hand, this is kind of frustrating. Yes, it hand, is. This is frontier science making it very exciting. It shows us that no matter how much we feel we're on top of things, we're still very much apes with smartphones on a tiny fragile island in space, looking into the sky, wondering how our universe works. There is so much left to learn, and that is awesome. This video is supported by the Australian Academy of Science, which promotes and supports yeah, I mean, it's awesome, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure I'm just as confused now as when I started this video. So dark matter is a property of space. I, I get that space isn't just nothingness. You know, let's look up a little bit more on dark matter. A component of the universe whose presence is discerned from its gravitational attraction rather than its luminosity. Okay. Approximately 85% of the matter in the universe. Hmm. You know what? Let's go to good old Wikipedia. Dark matter is called dark because it does not appear to interact with the electromagnetic field. Okay, which means it does not absorb, reflect, or emit electromagnetic radiation. Okay, I get that, and it's therefore difficult to detect, right? Various astrophysical observations, including gravitational effects, which cannot be explained by currently accepted theories of gravity unless more matter is present and can be seen, imply dark matter's presence. For this reason, most experts think that dark matter is abundant in the universe and has had a strong influence on the structure and evolution. Hmm, okay, so I I definitely get the part <coughs> about um, it not being, not interacting with the electromagnetic field, meaning it does not absorb, reflect, or emit electromagnetic radiation. Right. Assuming it exists, so yeah, we, they don't even know if it even exists, because as they said in the video, it's invisible. So... It's invisible, but it's the most present thing in the universe right now. Hmm. Just so you guys have an idea of the electromagnetic spectrum, let's look it up. Electromagnetic spectrum is, ah, uh, here we go. Let's look at this. All right. Yeah, so, so this is an example of the electromagnetic spectrum. And visible light is the only part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can actually see, that being color. So we have the spectrum begins with radio waves, and then you have microwaves, infrared, which is um, like an example of infrared would be the connection between your remote control and let's say like remote control and your TV. And then we have visible light which is the reason why we can see the things around us. And then we have ultraviolet, which you may have heard of, UV light, and x-ray, you know about that, and gamma rays. Okay, so they're saying that dark matter 
doesn't interact with the electromagnetic spectrum because it doesn't emit electromagnetic radiation or absorb it like light does. These types of radiation um, in the electromagnetic spectrum have electric and magnetic fields which allow them to be detected. We can detect visible light, we see it all around us. We can detect ultraviolet light, x-ray, gamma rays. Dark matter can't be detected at all, although it has a strong gravitational pull. So that's really interesting. Hmm. I would like to do a lot more research on dark matter. I must say I'm probably more confused actually than I am before I started the video because at least I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> Hopefully scientists will be able to um, detect uh, dark matter and dark energy and be able to pull some observations from it. I would definitely like to know more about it but we'll see. as. Time passes and technology gets more advanced. Hopefully we'll be able to see some progress on this particular subject. Because right now, it sounds like they got nothing. But, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Peace and love.